Hey y'all, I'm Black Witch Yaya. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Today we have another movie review and breakdown, but today we are going to talk about the movie The Skeleton's Key. But before we get into what happened in The Skeleton's Key, I am going to be making my Crystal Dry Rub, which is an all-in-one crystal cleanser for all of your crystals to keep them cleansed and charged, whether you want to sit them out in the moon, underneath the sun, put them in your jewelry box where you keep all of your crystals at so they can stay nice and cleansed. This is just what I'm concocting right now and you can purchase it from blackwitchyaya.com also my lovely t-shirt here true spook tv is the second channel for the baron you guys know i rep the baron that's my man he does his tarot card readings but he tells his true encounters with spirituality type stuff ghosts experiences curses that he's seen right in his own neighborhood he tells those stories over on true spook tv so if you want like realistic one-on-one -on -one, this is what happened to me and my auntie type stories make sure you subscribe to true spook tv and i'll have that link down below as well well let's get right into the breakdown of the skeleton's key for these reviews i do like to go over, over the overall movie as well so if you have not seen the movie there will be this video is nothing but spoilers so make sure you go check it out if you don't want me to spoil it but if you already seen it let's start out with the opening scene and the main character who name happens to be Caroline. So Caroline is a caretaker and she is currently reading to one of her patients in a nursing home and while she's reading to him he's going to the light. He passes away in that moment so she gathers up all his items and she wants to leave it at the front desk so the family of the patient can come pick it up but one of the other head nurses is like you might as well throw that away ain't nobody gonna come for that no one wants to deal with him right so she's like okay so she goes to the dumpster to throw away the belongings but she notices a whole bunch of other boxes of different patients items that just been thrown away because the family never came to pick it up or they know the family just doesn't want to deal with that patient anymore and they told her in a way of like all right hurry up and get his stuff out of here because we need to put somebody else in this room as if they were just so in a hurry just to get ready for another check caroline did not like that she ended up taking the belongings herself and just going through it and reminiscing on him being her patient and she starts to look for another job and she sees an ad in the newspaper that says hospice caretaker thousand dollars a week and of course like i just said cnas and hhas don't get paid enough so a thousand dollars a week sounds quite wonderful and it's for a private patient and this is going to be in terrebonne parish if i'm pronouncing that right terrebonne parish and like many of my stories this takes place in new orleans so Caroline is excited. She's like, wow, I just quit. Then the next thing you know, I see this ad. It's perfect. It's going to be a terrible in Paris. So her friend Joy is like, you know, that's in the swamps, right, girl? Ain't nothing down there but creepy things and haunted houses and all that ugh, stuff. So her friend is telling her, like, that's a dangerous area. It's so far away. Are you sure you want to do that? And her friend is kind of like, girl, did you hear me? It's $1,000 a week. Of course I am. And she's kind of tired of being in nursing homes where they don't really care for the patient. So she feels that working for actual family may be a more hands-on feel. It'll be a live-in hospice caretaker. So she feels like it'll be more personable. And she really wants that thrill and the feeling of taking care of someone because she felt like she waited too late to take care of her father. So she almost wants to pay back that energy through other elderly people. So now it's interview day. And Caroline notices when she pulls up her friend, Joy was kind of right. It is in like a weird area. She gets an eerie feeling when she pulls up but at the end of the day she's like this is a thousand dollars a week i'm about to go get this money so she knocks on the door no one's answered so she just walks in saying hello hello you know how that goes and so she sees the wife and the husband who's in a wheelchair out in the garden and she meets Luke the lawyer. I'm going to refer to him as Luke the lawyer to make it easy to remember him because he kind of goes in and out the story, but he plays a major role in the end. So she meets them and the wife, Violet, she's kind of like, mm, she don't really speak to her. She doesn't really want her there because she genuinely feels that she wouldn't understand the house. So then she meets Ben and Ben is currently mute. He had a seat that left him paralyzed it happened up in the attic they found him up there so that's why mainly he needs to be taken care of so of course despite all these red flags of the wife not liking you the house being creepy they didn't even answer the door for you she still decides to take the job so she goes back to her side of town she packs her bags and she makes her way to the family's home in Terrebonne 
Paris. Caroline, on her way to the new home, she has to stop by the gas station. And the gas station is magical as well. When she first pulls up, she sees a line of brick dust bordered along the entrance. So just to give you a quick breakdown of brick dust. Brick dust is kind of like salt, but times 10 thousand it is a mixture of brick dust different oils and powders and mainly sulfur that people use to line the perimeter inside and outside of their home for protection against energies and individuals that means to cause them harm they can't go past the brick dust of course i'm going to rep my man the baron who sells brick dust on his website and i'll link that down below but you will see this reoccur throughout the movie and it's also going to be a form of a saving grace in some components. So she sees the brick dust line, but she doesn't pay attention to it because even though she lives in New Orleans, she doesn't believe in all that stuff. She kind of feel like it's just some taboo thing that you see on TV and people just do it just to make themselves feel better. Like I told you, similar to the main character in the movie Spell. So she goes into the gas station. There is a weird encounter there with the older white lady, somebody holding a baby crying. To me, that didn't play a major role in the movie. So I'm just gonna go past that. But it just kind of goes into the signs of, oh, this is just creepy. So Caroline goes to the home. She's getting settled in. She's unpacking. But she can't help but notice in certain areas of their home, there's just a blank wall. And you can tell in that blank wall, like over the sink and in the bedroom, there were supposed to be mirrors there. But there aren't any mirrors. And then she later realizes there aren't any mirrors in the entire house. So Caroline still gets to work. She stops by Ben's room who is laying down. So she's just making sure that he's settled in. And then when going close to his bed, Ben gets a tight grip of her wrist and just kind of stares at her as if he's trying to send a message through his eyes. But like I said before, he's mute so he can't speak. But he immediately lets her hand go when Violet walks in. So Violet begins to give her a tour around the house saying, listen, you just worry about Ben don't worry about any housework I'll handle all the cleaning and stuff like that you just focus on him do you smoke you don't okay well I smoke a lot so I hope smoke doesn't bother you over here is this over here is that this room is this so Violet is continuing to give Caroline a tour and Caroline asks so how long have you guys been living here and she tells Caroline the story of oh we purchased this house from a brother and sister who fell on hard times Martin and Grace and she points to a picture so Caroline Caroline picks up the picture, but as she picks up the picture frame, another picture falls out. And it's not just of the brother and sister, Martin and Grace. It's a black couple standing behind the two young children by the name of Papa Justify and Mama Cecilia. She sees the photos, but she doesn't really pay attention to it. She just slides the picture back and they continue the tour. So Caroline then asks her, so why aren't there any mirrors in the house? And Violet makes a joke, oh, when you get old and wrinkly like us, you don't want any reminders. So Violet just brushes that off and she's like, well, anywho, there are 30 rooms in this home and this key here will open each room. So is this a key? No, but it's a brass onk that you can get from blackwitchyaya.com. It's very, very pretty. You can put it on your altar and you can utilize it during your spell working manifestations or what have you. You can charge it. You can use the crystal drawer up to charge it to your energy as well. I'll have this link down below. So Violet hands her a skeleton key, which will open every single room in the home. Violet does tell Caroline, if you want a small personal use mirror, you can have one. I wouldn't mind. Keep that in mind. So Caroline begins her caretaker work with bathing Ben, getting him nice and dressed up, sitting him out in the garden. He seems to be out in the garden a lot. And so while Violet is up there planting, she asks Caroline to go up to the attic to get some of her seeds that she needs. So Caroline does so. She goes up to the attic, but we will notice throughout this movie, Caroline is nosy, but she's the type of nosy that I like. So she goes up to the attic and she just doesn't stop at getting the seeds. She continues to search through the attic. Then she notices is a small door that's hidden behind like this little dresser that has things on it so she moves everything out the way and she notices that it has a lock and key but the skeleton key which is supposed to open everything in the house doesn't open that small door but when she tries to jiggle it she noticed the door begins to move and bang as if someone's trying to get out and moving the door on the other side with caroline being nosy violet is like where is this lady at so she's about to start making her way to the attic but caroline comes down and hands her the seeds and says i thought you said this key opens every room to the house there's a door up there that i tried to open but the key didn't work and so caroline says oh i've never been up there 
there. They must have added that on to the house. I just, you know, never grew curious of it. And then Caroline, you would think she would just be like, okay. But she's like, but didn't Ben have a stroke up there? Was was he behind that door? Like, what was going on? So she's asking all the questions that we want to know. And so Violet's like, I don't know. Why don't you ask him? And as we know, Ben is mute. So she was being sarcastic, like, girl, shut up. Like, I don't know. So that night, Carolyn is getting ready for bed. Then she sees a weird shadow. And then she starts to hear a lot of commotion going on. So she's going throughout the house to figure out where that commotion is coming from. And she sees that it's coming from Ben's room. So she uses the key to open Ben's door. And she sees that the window is open and it's a storm. So all the rain is coming in. So she's looking for Ben to see where he is. And he fall off the bed. And then she looks through the window to find Ben on top of the roof trying to escape so he's right on the edge he falls off caroline runs downstairs to try to save him and then violet comes and she's like oh my gosh ben what did they make you do so immediately we're like who is they why would they make him do something so violet tells caroline to go get the wheelchair and so when she goes back up to Ben's room, she sees that a whole lot of stuff is knocked over. It's a whole lot of commotion for someone who is supposedly bedridden. Like if you bedridden, how did you move all this stuff around? And so then she sees a sheet laying on the floor. And when she holds up the white sheet, it says, help me. So she gets that sheet for herself. She grabs the wheelchair and she goes down to get Ben back in the bed. So the next day, Luke the lawyer comes. And so he's just kind of checking in. He's going, he's there to update the will because they're, you know, like I told you guys before, it was a hospice situation. So they're expecting him to pass away eventually. And so he he's coming there to go over the estate section in the will. So Caroline's like, hey, can I show you something? So she gets the sheet that she hidden out of her closet to show him like, listen, I don't know what's going on. He was on top of the roof last night. They said he bedridden, but how can a bedridden person start crawling on the roof? And look at this sheet. It says, help me. But when she opens up the sheet, it says the plain white sheet. The wording is gone. So, of course, Luke, the lawyer, does not believe her. So she continues on with her own investigation. She makes her way back up to the attic. And this time she has a bobby pin, it looks like, with her. So she could be able to pick the lock to that secret door. So she was able to get in. And as soon as she opened the little door, a big gust of dust blew out. But she still was able to make her way in. So she starts snooping around. And what it looks like is a little root work type of shop, similar to the movie Spell. It looked exactly like that. So she sees jars of different artifacts. She sees skulls, heads, snake heads. She sees a whole lot of stuff going on. And so then she runs across this photo that has Martin and Grace along with other people. But Papa Justify and Mama Cecilia is located in that photo as well. And then she runs across a book and the book is titled... Receipt book of Papa Justify and Blessed Teaching. So basically, whoever this Papa Justify guy is, she found his spell book. So the first page she turns to says, Chalk, Sulfur, Blood, Hair, Conjuration of Supreme Protection. Remember that for later in this video. So as she continues to snoop, she notices a ring that has three snakes on it. And she runs across an album that's titled, Papa Justify, Conjure of Sacrifice, August 24th. 1920. So while Caroline is up there in the attic being nosy, Violet is downstairs doing her own investigation to see where Caroline is. So she gets a feeling that she may be in the attic. So she starts making her way to the attic while Caroline continues to look throughout the attic. And like I said before, there are some jars in there with different things going on. So she finds this one big jar that's drenched in fluid and has a cow tongue in it that's tied up. The reason she was able to recognize it was a cow tongue because she got scared by noise of Violet coming up. She dropped it and you can see a big old cow tongue that is tied up. I'll pause right here just to give you guys a little insider. The cow tongue is basically a spell that is used by a lot of people for people just to shut up. It's usually used against people who are speaking against them. That's stopping their prosperity. That's stopping their peace. So they'll do up a spell for that person using the cow tongue signifying for their tongue to get tied anytime they try to speak against the individual. And this is where the audience can probably put two and two together that that cow tongue was for Ben. Hence why he is mute. So immediately you start wondering, so why did they put a spell on Ben? What's up with Ben? Is he an enemy? Like what's going on? Let's continue. Caroline 
is almost busted by Violet. So she was able to escape and hide and all that good stuff. But she kept the album with her. So when she made her way back to her side of town, she started to play the album to see what it says. And it seemed like some type of spell ritual was going on. And we just hear Papa Justify's voice. So she's back on her side of town. So her friend Joy walks in like, what are you doing? And so Caroline kind of tells her, like gives her the whole rundown. And Joy is like, listen, I don't know nothing about that, but I could take you to a shop where my aunt used to go. She's kind of into this type of stuff. So she takes her to what looks like a wash house, like a washer, what do you call it? A laundry mat. And so, of course, they didn't go in just yet, but she's like, that's where my aunt used to go. But Caroline will make her way back there a little later. Caroline is now back to work. So she's tucking Ben in and she's looking through his room and she sees a spot on the wall where a mirror used to be. So Caroline being the, I don't know what she got going on. She took it upon herself to put the mirror back on the wall. And when Violet sees the mirror, she immediately freaks out. I had me a good old amethyst buried underneath there. So Violet storms in Caroline's room. And she's like, I told you absolutely no mirrors. Violet takes the mirror. She put it back in the attic where all the other mirrors were. That's where Caroline originally found the mirror. All the mirrors that were once in the house are just stored up in the attic covered with blankets. Caroline storms up behind her. She is like, you said you didn't have a key to go in that room, but yet all the mirrors in the house are up there and you took the mirrors down. So what's going on? And Violet's like, look, you're not from the South. You wouldn't understand this. Just don't go up there and start touching stuff. This house is theirs as much as mine's. And so Caroline's like, this house is as much as whose as yours. So Violet begins to tell her this story. This house belonged to a banker named Thor. Him, his wife, his children, and they had two servants, Papa Justify and Mama Cecilia. But Thor was a cruel man. He stole from the poor just so he could continue to get rich. And he had good servants that he really liked, Papa Justify and Mama Cecilia. But Thor didn't know that Papa Justify was a two-headed doctor, which basically means he healed in a physical and spiritual sense and he knew how to conjure up stuff. And so did Mama Cecilia. So one night they were having a party and once the party was over, everyone wanted to go say goodbye to the two children. And we could see that the two children are Martin and Grace. And so they go around the house looking for them. They're drunk and turned up. So they try to turn it into a game who could find the children. And then one of the party goers hears music coming upstairs from the attic. They go up to the attic and they see that Papa Justify and Mama Cecilia are standing over the two children as they're standing in the circle with different veves and symbols, teaching them how to conjure up hoodoo. So immediately the father was pissed and everyone decided to have a after party, which included the hanging of Papa Justify and Mama Cecilia. The children tried to explain to their parents, no, this is our fault. We wanted to learn from them. They know how to do magic and stuff. We wanted to learn how to do it. It's our fault. It's our fault. But no one was listening to them. They started celebrating as they seen the life disappear from Papa Justify and Mama Cecilia as they hung from the tree which happens to be the center point of the garden that they like to be in. So what happened to the family, Caroline asked. Well, after they hung them, their business went under. They had to sell the house. And one day the father got so mad that he was now poor that he shot his wife or turned around and shot himself. That's why I don't keep mirrors in the house because it seems that sometimes you can see them in the mirrors. You can see the spirits. Or at least that's what I read in the hoodoo books. Also in the hoodoo books, I read that if you use brick dust, you can like protect yourself from evil energies. So I made me a whole bunch of brick dust that I keep and I just made one bit circle around the house to try to keep the spirits out. Caroline listened to the story, but for some reason, she just did not believe that the mirrors were the cause of the problem. Like, are you sure you can see these spirits of the people who once lived here and was hanging here? You can see them in the mirror. Like, are you sure? So remember earlier, Violet told Caroline that she can have a personal mirror for her own use. So Caroline wanted to test the system. While giving Ben a bath one day, she takes her personalized makeup mirror and she holds it in front of Ben's face and he immediately begins to freak out. He screams, like he's trying to scream at least, and he's moving, he's splashing water like he just did not like what he's seen in the mirror. So that's when Caroline knew like, oh shoot, this man legit can see stuff in the mirror because he wasn't there to hear the story. So there's no way he's faking about it. So I guess on her break, she makes her way back to her side of town and she talks to Joy again 
in and she goes to the shop that Joy told her that her aunt goes to. It looks like a wash house, but once you go upstairs, it's like this botanica that's in there. And she talks to the owner, lets the owner know what's going on, that the man is mute, she's in a cow tongue, there's no mirrors in the house, all this stuff. So the owner's like, it sounds like someone got him bind up. And so Caroline's like, yeah, but are you sure this is true? Like, are you sure that the family just doesn't believe it so much to the point where they feel like it's true? Like something like psychosemantic, like they just truly believe it so much they operate in that fear. The same thing that Marcus said in the movie Spill, like, are you sure it's a psychosemantic? Are you sure it's real? Are you sure they're just not being delusional? And so I guess the owner's kind of like, okay, this girl don't know no better, but she gives her all these supplies to untie Ben so she could really find out what's going on so she goes to Ben's room one night she gets to work she takes the cross candle she lights it up she pours oils on it it's sitting in a glass bowl of water she puts all the herbs in it basically doing a reversal spell for Ben and she takes the as the candle's burning and she has the cross in there she's taking the water and she's throwing it on Ben so as she's splashing the water on him she continues to say the following spell cleanse this man cleanse this room cleanse this house his words has gotten lost, lost and wandering in his mind. Let the water run down and let this water wash away. This condition in his tongue has gotten tied, tied and tangled in his throat. Let the water run down and wash away this affliction. Send his voice to go free. Let the water run down and wash away. And as she sang this spell, you can see tears coming down Ben's face. So that's when she knows that it's working. So as she continues to do the spell, Ben begins to whisper, So before he wasn't talking, so she know the spell worked. And then Caroline asks, well, what are you afraid of? What's going on? And he points at the door and then Violet begins to try to come in the door. Like, what are you doing? What's going on in there? What's all that commotion? Let me in, Caroline, let me in. So Caroline continues to do the spell to make sure everything is done. And so Violet pulls out her key to go into the room. And so Violet storms in, Caroline was able to cover up everything. And then Violet's like, well, that's it. You don't need to do anything else for tonight. And then Caroline's like, are you sure I can continue to tuck him in? And Violet's like, no, you're done. Like, just go. Because I guess she wanted to tie him back up and have that privacy so she could redo her spell. So now Caroline knows something is for sure going on. So the next day, Luke DeLore comes. So she's again trying to explain to Luke DeLore, like, listen, there's something odd going on. I knew from the moment that I got here, something is off. So she goes back to the gas station with Luke DeLore to talk to the old white lady that she saw before. And basically from this conversation, she knows that the old white lady knows about Papa Justify and knows about his power and all that good stuff. And the spell that she turned to before the Supreme Conjurer is basically a spell where you take someone's years from their life and add it to yours. And so from there, Luke DeLore is like, okay, listen, Caroline, you just try to get as much proof as you can. I can get a restraining order if Violet is really is putting Ben in danger just just go get me the proof and Caroline's like okay but in actuality she's like listen that sounds cute but I gotta get to work myself so when she gets back to work at the home she notices that Violet's in the kitchen cooking acting like nothing ever happened we see Violet cutting up some chicken feet and putting in some type of soup so already we know that something is off and Caroline knows that something is off in general because all of this stuff that's going on so she goes to the shed area and she finds where Violet was keeping the brick dust and she takes a bunch of it so she lines her room door with the brick dust and covers it over a rug and so she calls Violet in the room saying hey Violet there's this leak up here that I hear come look at it and Violet's standing at the door like oh well I'm cooking right now I could come look at it later and then Caroline looks at Violet at the door and notices that she's not walking in she's like no just look at the leak really quick I feel like it's really bad mind you this entire time Violet has not crossed the entryway and she's just like oh well I'll look at it later I'm sure it's fine and then Caroline's like no I really want you to look at it it looks like a bad leak and then Violet's like I have to continue cooking now and she never entered the room door so that's when Caroline knew like oh shoot this brick dust really worked because Violet didn't know that she put brick dust there so that's when she knew like okay for sure this brick dust keeps out evil energy why is it keeping out Violet if she's not really evil so now she's discovering that all this stuff really works and she truly believes in it 
So during this time as well, Caroline realized that the album that she took and the spell book that she took from the attic is no longer in her possession. So Violet tells Caroline, oh, come have dinner with me, come have dinner with me. And so Caroline is already suspect of what's going on. So Caroline took some type of substance and put it in some sugar cubes that, that Violet usually uses for her tea. But that night she decided not to put any sugar in her tea. And Caroline decided that she's not eating any of the food. But when Violet had to step away whatever substance the knock them down oil i'll call it that she put in the sugar cubes when violet walked away she poured it into her tea so as they're continuing the conversation like violet is beginning to knock out and she falls on the floor and she's like passed out knocked out at the moment violet sees that she has some type of paper in her hand and it ended up being a page torn out of the spell book so while violet is knocked out caroline uses this as her opportunity to go storming through the room to see what's going on so as she She's moving stuff around, going through her belongings. She sees that Violet has a line of brick dust almost everywhere. At the door, underneath her bed, all of that stuff. She notices the spell book that Violet took from Caroline. And she also notices that Violet had a lock of Caroline's hair. And you know that sheet from earlier that somehow disappeared that said, help me. Violet was the one that went and switched out the sheets in her room. So when she tried to tell Luke the lawyer that something was going on, she would just be showing a blank sheet. So now that Caroline knows Violet is officially up, it's time for them to escape. So Caroline grabs Ben, wheels him down, puts him in the car. They try to go somewhere, but they ended up seeing that Violet locked the front entrance gate from the outside. So she tried to drive through car was all busted up they couldn't drive through so she took ben she hid him in the shed meanwhile the whole time violet got her evil behind back up but she got a rifle and she hunting down caroline caroline is running 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 she ends up hopping in the boat and going through the swamp going to ben's house not ben's house luke's house luke the lawyer's house and so she's telling luke all of what's going on violet ends up calling luke so luke is acting like okay let, let me take this call i'm gonna talk to her so caroline like i told you before is very nosy so she goes through snooping through Luke's house and she opens the drawer finds pictures of her and she sees all of the evidence that she's been giving Luke to prove her case just stored there the rings and everything and so Luke sees her looking he goes behind Caroline chokes her out and brings her right back to the house but that doesn't stop the battle Caroline continues to run and hide she ends up using the brick dust all around her so they're trying to chase after her but they can't get to her because she's using the brick dust in every area so now we know Violet and Luke are in it all along Caroline makes her way to the attic and she remembers the circle that Violet told her about in the story with Papa Justify Mama Cecilia and the two kids how they were sitting in this type of circle with candles all around them and they were conjuring up hoodoo so Caroline immediately believes oh my gosh if I make a circle it'll protect me for whatever they're about to do she draws a sigil from that paper and the spell that she took from violet so she thinks she just did something so when mama not mama so when violet and luke the lawyer walks in they see her standing in the circle and they're thinking oh perfect while caroline up there thinking that oh i made a sign of protection you guys can't get me and then violet's like yeah it protects you from leaving the circle not from us going in and so Caroline is like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? She realized she must have misunderstood the spell or did the spell wrong. So Violet is basically telling her like, yeah, you can't leave that circle. So now you just got to stay there. So part of this interruption, guys, I just wanted to add in this quick tidbit to make this part of the movie a little bit clearer. So while Luke the lawyer and Violet are chasing Caroline around the house, Caroline makes her way to the attic where a big circle of lit white candles are already in place. So Caroline thought that that would be the perfect opportunity to draw the sigil that she's seen in Papa Justify's spell book in order to protect her. So basically she thought it was the brick dust time 10,000 like, oh yeah, they wouldn't be able to get in this circle. But once she draws the sigil and everything, when Violet and Luke the lawyer comes in, they're thinking, oh, perfect, because that's what they wanted all along. So Violet explains to her, oh, that's not a protection for us not to enter the circle. That's for you not to leave the circle. So Caroline is immediately confused because she thought that was a form of protection, but it's to protect her from leaving the circle so they can do a spell on her. So Violet's explaining to her, like, I made you a believer. You believe in all this 
this stuff now so it's easy to do the spell on you so immediately caroline begins to try to convince herself that she doesn't believe so she's saying i don't believe i don't believe in this and this isn't real and violet is basically like it's too late you do believe so basically the ceremony they're trying to perform is to switch bodies with her and this is the exact same thing that happened earlier in this video where i told you guys where papa justify and mama cecilia had the two children sitting in the circle they ended up switching bodies with the two children so when they hung papa justify and mama cecilia they were actually hanging the souls of martin and grace their children so papa justify and mama cecilia are still living because they continue to switch bodies with other people that they bring into the home but you will see that play out towards the end so Violet gets this full body mirror and she pushes it towards Caroline. It pushes her and she sees flashes of Mama Justify, not Mama, Papa Justify, Mama Cecilia popping up. The mirror ends up knocking her out. Violet passes out as well. And then Caroline wakes up. Caroline wakes up. She goes over to Violet who is knocked out and she grabs a cigarette from her and a lighter and she smokes it. But we remember that Caroline doesn't smoke violet does so caroline basically put the spell on herself when she made that circle they transfer energies so now violet is now in caroline's body but it's not even violet it's mama cecilia and papa justify is in luke's the lawyer's body so now we see what we think caroline and luke the lawyer staring in the mirror but now it's Violet's body, who we thought was Violet, but was Mama Cecilia the whole time. And Luke, the lawyer was Papa Justify the whole time. And they're looking in the mirror and who we see is Caroline, but is really Mama Cecilia. She says, I told you I wanted a black person this time. And then Papa Justify, who's in the body of Luke, the lawyer says, well, beggars can't be choosers, baby. So they're happy with their work. Ben is on a stretcher. Violet is now on a stretcher, which Violet is now Caroline and Caroline's body, but they both can't speak. And so then before when all of this is going on, a little rewind, Caroline called her friend Joy while the showdown was going on, telling her like, listen, you need to come get me. You were right about this house. It's crazy. So when they're both on the stretcher, Joy shows up and she's speaking to who she think is Caroline, but it's really Mama Justify. And she's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? You called me. So, of course, she's like, what? I called you. Oh, yes, I remember. I called you. I called you. Yes, everything is fine now. And so, of course, Mama Justify just said that, not Mama Justify, Mama Cecilia just said, oh, I told you I wanted a black person. So, she sees Joy, who is Caroline's black friend. So, now she's like, oh, yes, we'll be okay here. Everything's all right. Basically trying to make her feel comfortable being there. She even asked Joy to go to the hospital with Ben and Violet, who was, again, now Caroline is in Violet's body. So they go to the hospital and basically the story continues. Whoever's going to be the next hospice care person, which it seems like it may be Joy. So now they're going to take over Joy's body. So Papa Justify and Mama Cecilia can continue to have access and live in the house. Hence the, hence the name of the movie, The Skeleton's Key, which opens every room of the house, symbolizing that Papa Justify and Mama Cecilia will always have access to the house. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was The Skeleton's Key. So I kind of already did a breakdown of what happened in this movie with the different elements and spells. The tongue tie spell again is used for people who is speaking against you. Um, the brick dust is serious. The brick dust does work. It is a form of protection against evil people and evil energy. Like I said, it's just very, very strong. And sometimes you will be surprised who will not cross that line. So if you're not ready to lose friends or realize who family members are, don't get it. Trust me transferring of energy spells my magic don't go that deep so i have not ever heard of someone switching someone's body but i have heard a story of older people utilizing young people energy to keep them living that's actually a story that's featured on true spook tv told by the baron about when he was a kid there was an older man who had this lawnmower and as long as the kids continuously used the lawnmower it kept him alive so you could go over there and listen to that story i'll link that down below because to me that's more of a realistic version of the transferring of spells that took place in this movie and in the movie spell as well you got to be careful who you let kids go over to the candy lady oh i got a candy lady story i need to remember 
remember that you need to be careful who you let your kids go over to their house because them older people can't be utilizing their energy if you notice all of a sudden your kids coming home sick and tired all of a sudden when they got all the energy and health in the world just try to remember who house you let them over their energy can be used to keep old people living for a long time hence why sometimes you may see older people who live a very very long time tend to be surrounded by a lot of young people most of the time but yes, so that is the movie, The Skeleton's Key. I actually enjoyed that a little bit more than Spell, I believe, just because it had a lot of different of magical elements in there. With the mirrors, you guys know, I told you in my mirror video, I'll link that down below as well. When you first enter into your home, you want to make sure you cleanse all the mirrors that's in that home because every reflection that has been shown in that mirror is stored in that mirror. So therefore, their energy is still there. You know how eyes are like the key to the soul. So imagine when you look in the mirror, you're looking at your direct deflection, diving directly into your soul. And the mirror holds all the energy and interactions in that. So if you have a mirror that's been in a home where people are arguing, you may notice a lot of tension and arguments take place. So you just want to get rid of that old energy. I just talked so much. Lordy, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Let me know if you guys watched The Skeleton's Key down below. What do you guys think of the movie? And let me know if any other movies or souls you want me to watch. But thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. And like I say, as above, so below, as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul. This video will be out. Until next time, you guys, I say, baby.